In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. Now, in the previous video, we discussed uh, spontaneous changes and noted that for something to be spontaneous, it was maximizing the dispersal of energy. And that this idea of energy being dispersed uh, in a maximal way um, really gives us a way to predict uh, if, if something is going to be spontaneous or not by how much energy it disperses. So you can think of entropy as the, a measure of this dispersal of energy. So entropy, which we use a capital S to denote entropy, is really a measure of the dispersal of energy. Right, so um, as energy is transferred, uh, there's going to be some sort of change in this measure of entropy. And we'll give a, a thermodynamic definition for entropy in just a second. But right now, just think of entropy as the measure of the dispersal of energy. So let's say that we have our surroundings and system uh, enclosure, our general you know, system defined in an isolated enclosure. And let's say for this isolated enclosure that there's some transfer of heat from the surroundings to the system, right? So uh, it's set up in such a way that there can only be uh, heat transfer between the system uh, and surroundings, right? That means that there's going to be some change in the dispersal of energy for the system, right? Because it's receiving some energy from the surroundings, right? So you're gonna have a delta S for the system. And the same thing here for the surroundings, right? you're going to have some sort of change in its dispersal of energy since it's giving some of its energy to the system in the form of heat, right? So we're going to have a delta S for the surroundings as well, right? So you have a delta S for the system and a delta S for the surroundings. Now, um, the second law of thermodynamics is related specifically to the delta S of your entire universe, right? So you're going to have a, a change in delta S for the system a change in delta s for the surrounding and the sum of both of those gives you the delta s for your universe right so let's define delta s universe as being equal to the sum of delta s for your system plus the delta s of your surroundings Now this is really crucial to understand um, that when we're talking about the second law of thermodynamics, we're really referencing the change in entropy for the universe, not just the system and not just the surroundings. So what is the second law of thermodynamics? Well, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that there's always going to be a net increase in the delta S of the universe, right? So we'll have delta S universe will always be greater than zero, right? So this is the second law of thermodynamics. Right, so like I said, basically this is just telling us that for any uh, real process, there will be a increase in the entropy, right? So there's a few ways uh, to state this, right? So we can say that for any real process, there will always be an increase in entropy. Right, and this is why I'm saying that it's so important for you to understand that we're talking about delta S of the universe. You can have a decrease in entropy in the system or surroundings respectively, right? So if we think about it uh, here, right, with delta S uh, surroundings, it's going to be donating some heat or transferring some heat to the system, right? So the entropy of the system is going to increase because that thermal energy is going to increase the uh, fluctuations of the atoms so it's going to increase the system entropy but the surrounding entropy is going to decrease what the second law of thermodynamics is saying is that there always will be a net increase right so let me actually add that word here it's always going to be a net increase in entropy uh, when you're talking about the entropy of the entire universe 
Now, the other way to, to uh, say the second law of thermodynamics involves this idea of spontaneous change. And basically, um, this, this is just saying same thing like a real process, right? So uh, for a spontaneous change, there will always be an increase in entropy. Will increase entropy in an isolated system. Right, so these are really two ways of saying the same thing, right? So um, this first statement is just saying that any real process will have a net increase in entropy. But the other one kind of gets to uh, what we talked about, about spontaneous change. So now the question kind of remains here, how do we thermodynamically define uh, entropy, right? So think about it as we're trying to measure uh, the dispersal of energy, right? And we have a, a, a useful way of tracking how energy is dispersed or transferred by heat, right? So uh, we really use heat as the way to define the, uh, the entropy, the total entropy, right? So if we think about defining entropy, so I'm going to write ds, right? So this is just your differential for the entropy, right? Um, it's going to be a ratio, right? So it's going to be a ratio of dq, and I'm going to put the subscript rev. This stands for reversible path. In order to define entropy, we're going to have to define a reversible path for our process. And that's because, as we saw in the Carnot cycle, the heat is not a state function, right? So it's going to depend on the path that your process is taking. So um, if it's a reversible path or an irreversible path, those are going to be two different transfers um, of heat, right? Two different quantities. However, with the uh, entropy, we want to have a state function, so we're specifically going to define it with a reversible path in mind. So um, you take this heat from your reversible path and you put it over the temperature, right? So this is basically a ratio that's telling you, okay, at higher and higher temperatures, there's going to be less change in the entropy of your system, even if you add more heat versus at lower temperatures, you will have a greater change in the entropy, right? So this is our definition of entropy uh, for uh, the thermodynamic differential, right? So this is your entropy. And this is the heat for a reversible path. So this is specifically for a reversible path path, right? So this just gives us a general overview of what entropy is and how it gels with the second law of thermodynamics.